Okay, guys, today, I, I believe from some uh, initial testing when I purchased this bike, that this is gonna be a good one for failures on some pretty big volt drop. So when I purchased, like I said, I had like no headlights, no tail lights or anything else. So we've kind of started to disassemble the bike. It has a little bit of a cool, uh, unique uh, system where the battery is stuffed back here. And because there's no starter on this bike, <coughs> excuse me, it has a pretty small maintenance-free battery. Okay, and this uh, this is gonna be kind of modified here as uh, we build this bike. <coughs> now, I, when I first bought the bike and saw this, I oh great, maintenance-free, it's cool, it sits in this position, don't have to worry about it because of the, the venting and whatnot. But from what we learned on Yuasa's website yesterday, what was the concern about this bike having a maintenance-free battery? The charging. What about the charging there, Chance? Uh, I might not have enough voltage to charge the battery. Yeah, so there's a, there's a charging system down here, our stator down here, and according to Yawasa, to have a maintenance-free battery, you need a charging system that can put out at least 14.4 volts. And when I checked this, um, I was just having over 13. So if I can't charge it fast enough and I were to uh, ride for a long time like with the high beam light on, I might not be able to replenish the battery at fast, as fast as I'm consuming it. So you get what I'm saying? Yep. That's, I really don't think it's going to be a problem on this bike because, uh, like I said, I don't have a starter that's going to drain it way down and, and I think it's going to work perfectly fine. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a look here at um, how to test to see if we have good grounds with the bike. So your guys' lab sheet today was your ground verification. We got Chris here It's going to go ahead and uh, perform some of these tests. Uh, why don't you guys uh, grab me your test light too. We'll just start with the test light to show it. Test light. Got it. Thank you. So you can see here, it's kind of cool little quick connect. And we're just going to start off by getting an idea of how the test light lights and what it'll look like on the battery itself. So you can kind of see the, the light there. Now here's what you do. You're gonna leave it on the positive, leave that hooked up there. <clears throat> You're gonna leave this on the positive and now when you switch this with no key on or anything and you just start to switch around the motorcycle to different spots, it's gonna test the integrity of the ground wire on the bike. So go ahead and just start testing different spots. Pretty good ground? Yeah. Yep. Looks good, right? Not such a great ground right there, is it? Uh -huh. So the rubber dampener, the rust on the bolts or something, he can finally find a spot that has one. Why don't you just try even like the foot peg? Okay, so we got pretty good grounds on this. Let's try the engine, because we always know the ignition system grounds. The ignition system will ground through the frame, or excuse me, through the engine which is bolted to the frame which the ground wire is bolted to. So we're looking for all those paths. I'm feeling pretty good about that. So now we'll switch to a multimeter. And we're going to do the exact same test. We just wanted to show that with a light because the night, you know, I'm a fan of a test light because it's quick. It's really fast, it's really easy. But the bad thing about the test light, it doesn't give us the measured voltage. Um, the test light, I'd say more is just a go, no go. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah. Uh, did anybody in here, did you guys have a preference of what you liked when you were doing the lab? Test light. Test light? Anybody prefer the meter? I prefer the meter. A couple people prefer the meter. <laughs> if you do it with the meter, it's one less step, right? Yep. Okay. You know, bolts or? Yep, we on bolts. We're going to actually use and check for volts in these same exact spots. So what he needs to do is battery first, and then I'll hold this up here for the camera. And so we have 12.55 volts. <clears throat> now he can start doing those same other spots. Pretty good ground right there. Oh yeah. Absolutely a zero loss. Go back and do some of the other ones. Here's that one that was struggling. Do you see until he finds the perfect spot? Kind of wiggle it. I saw 11 volts there for a little bit, three volts. That's what you'd see on a bad ground situation. Do the foot peg ones. We had really good ground right there. Battery voltage, okay? So we have, we have good grounds. <clears throat> We're gonna switch now to uh, do a quick ohms test. So we'll disconnect this. <laughs> Anytime we test for resistance or ohm testing, what do we need to do with the power, guys? Disconnect. We need to disconnect the power. So now we're going to go
from the, the black wire here, which is the right one for you guys, we got to make sure we're not touching. I got it. It's not touching. And he's going to change the meter to continuity. And why don't you go ahead and put the buzz feature on for the video. Okay. And touch the lead itself. The lead. To where my hand is, yep. The meter. The lead, the lead. You're testing the... All right, I'm just already hooked up. You should always test your meter. Okay, you don't want to go do a bunch of testing to find out that you got a bad lead. So now he's going to go test those same spots that he did before. Good continuity. Yep. Just go to like the foot peg. Okay, so that's another way to test for that integrity and not and make sure. Go ahead and look at the meter here. I'll take this off. And you'll see that when you don't have continuity, you have OL. You guys tell everybody what that means. Out of limits. Out of limits. Some people say overload. And when we uh, have good continuity, we, we're we going to have maybe, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, or zeros. And do you see how it took a little time to stabilize? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we lear also learned here that what is super important to do continuity or resistance testing with a meter? What's so important about the meter, the maintenance side of it? Chris, you just did one in another meter. Check the battery. Battery. Oh, Good battery. Check the tool. Yeah, if your battery's bad or getting weak, you're going to get bad results. So that's an important fact uh, to take a look at. So.